Knowing how to sew does not mean you make good outfits. Yes. The same way having money doesn't mean you have good taste. Mm-hmm, exactly. This is all stars and we all find women who've got a little money and they still commission gross outfits. Are you talking about me again? <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes they wear them to the pit stop. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Trixie Mattel, and welcome back to The Pit Stop, the show where we recap RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 6. And today's episode is brought to you by Orbitz. Joining me today is a queen we all know and love, the epitome of a drag race, legend, mm. Manila Luzon today. Hello. Hi, Trixie. Drag queen's touching, new year. I know, <laughs> things have changed so much. <laughs> How does it feel to be in drag head to toe? It feels as uncomfortable as ever, for sure. You yeah. look so beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. I uh, I put some some makeup on today. Do you love an all star season? Um, yes, of course. I've been on two of them. That girl. <laughs> Which, by the way, I have to say, during quarantine, I got to go back and watch All Stars One. Watch it again. It's fabulous. It doesn't get talked about enough. Well, I mean, we did have like the best of the best up until that point on All Stars. You did so good on Drag Race. Well, thank you. Every time. Thank you. Does All Stars 4 seem like a long time ago or does it feel fresh? I mean, it, it was a long time ago. We had an entire pandemic between when I was on Drag Race All Stars and now. So. That's how I feel. I mean, I know there was an All Stars last year, but that mm -hmm. feels like five years ago. It, it does, especially since like there have been like 14 seasons of other franchises in different countries of Drag Race. Every country and county of the world has Drag Race. <laughs> There's a Sonoma County Drag Race. Sonoma County Drag Race. <laughs> I'm here for it. You win a vineyard. Now that I would confuse. Ooh, okay. What does it feel like to know that you have been part of an iconic Drag Race moment when you were shockingly sent home by Miss Naomi Smalls. I re I'm really happy and really proud of what I did on the show. And um, I actually uh, got so much uh, love and support from the fans after that moment. Yes. So let's get into this girl because we have a <laughs> lot to talk about. We're gonna be critiquing a ball today, which I don't know mm. if you know, but when Violet was here, the CDC basically decided that her critiques were inhumane. She went in, <laughs> she came through she went with the comments. <laughs> Have you had a lot of experience judging balls? Um, yes, how like w well they hang, what the smell is, <laughs> how fuzzy they are. I love it. Last week, the lip sync assassin Coco Montrese revealed that sadly, Serena Cha Cha was the first queen to sashay away. Mm -hmm. Trinity K. Bonet is relieved that she survived and that her fellow queens voted for her to stay. But gag, if Yara had won the lip sync, she would have sent home Trinity. Do you Ooh. think that puts a target on Yara? See, that's what I don't like about having to reveal your votes. So you've competed against Yara. What is she like as a competitor? She is like, she's like a wild card. She's a little bit of a dark horse. You don't quite know what she's gonna like pull out. Yeah. She's super creative in, in ways that are so far out of the box that you're just like, Bgrr! In your all-star season, you chose Monet's lipstick instead of Latrice's. Do you think that put a target on your back? Yes, I think so. But I also knew that like, I would not be able to look at my friend in the eye if I had chosen her to go home despite that. It, it, they're all saying integrity, but like ultimately like the game is the game, but you also have to like live with yourself afterwards. So yeah. also there is no rules. I'm choosing it based on birthdays. That's valid. Do you remember anyone's birthday? No. All right, so the next day the queens talk about trade. Who do you think is the trade of this cast? I'm gonna say probably Eureka. I think Eureka's probably the tradiest of all of them. The tradiest of all tradism. The tradiest of the season at least. I have a I have a tie trade. My okay. my tie trade is Akiria. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Am I, I, I'm just now realizing that Scarlet Envy out of drag is definitely a vibe. Scarlet is a very attractive man with that long Fabio hair. I want to listen to like Phil Collins music and he can carry me through the jungle on a, on a vine. Yes, Tarzan. Yeah. Also, they talked about the meaning of trade, which I didn't know that there was multiple interpretations of what that meant. If we're being honest, I think that straight people don't know what it really means. I, to be honest, I don't think drag, drag queens even know what it means. <laughs> That's what I mean. I was like, yeah. why do you not know what trade? Trade doesn't mean someone hot, period. That doesn't mean trade. No, trade just means that you will have sex with them, I think. Or maybe there's like some kind of trade involved. 
that trade you know, like goods and services. You f me and you get a free in free merch. <laughs> You know? Rue enters and announces okay. that for the maxi challenge this week, the queens are throwing a ball and the category is blue. A blue ball. Manila, do you love a ball? I love a ball, but I hate blue balls. Very I uncomfortable and I just feel like time has been wasted. This is the first time I've been excited about a blue ball. Yes, well, I mean, I, this is great because this is happening on episode two, which means that we are getting looks, 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 looks. Like every girl has come with three looks and there's like 50 <sighs> girls at this point. Girl. We're gonna be here forever. We're doing 36 looks today. Have you warmed up? Are you stretched? Yes, all that talk of trade made me like do my Kegels yeah. first. All right, so Manila, you won the money ball on season three. Yes. What are your memories of that? We not only had to make an entire outfit out of money, then a bathing suit outfit, then we had to do a choreographed dance first. And this was after like two or three episodes of multiple looks on the runway. So yeah, it was quite exhausting, but I won that challenge and it's one of my favorites. So for the blue ball, the categories are blue better work, the blue collar look, blue jean baby, a denim look, mm -hmm. and blue ball bonanza, which is a high fashion look the queens have to make using unconventional blue objects. Yes. What do you think about the theme? I love I love it. I love the blue collar look because it's like we're all like working the runway, so it's like a little pun there. Denim is always a good like material that like yes. isn't really like it's so like every day, so to like to make it fashion is like always fun. What blue objects would you have gone for? Ooh. Um well I definitely would <gasps> Definitely would <gasps> Well, and that was the pit was stop. Definitely would have stayed away from uh, most of those. The, the trick is, is to get these unconventional objects and then to make something that doesn't look like it's made with the, that crap. That's the big part of it, is like, can you make it not look like what it is? Yeah. We gotta talk about your sister, Jiggly Caliente. She's feeling a bit nervous considering her experience on season four. Yeah, she had one of like the most memorable, terrible <laughs> making <laughs> out of runways in all of Drag Race history. Like yeah. that baked potato, post-apocalyptical. And that boat. And the boat. I forgot about how San Tropez that was. Oh my oh. gosh. Do you think you could do well in a ball without knowing how to sew? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really know how to sew. Like, you didn't? No, I, like, I was a fr most of it was just like, get this machine to sew like a tube and then we'll hot glue the rest. Meanwhile, Raja O'Hara is having flashbacks to her ball on season 11, which is the challenge she went home on. Do you ever feel that a challenge you struggle with on your original season can haunt you on All Stars? Oh yeah, for sure. Especially if it's the one that you got sent home in. And it's like, you really do want to prove that you've learned something since you went on the show last time. I think it goes both ways too, because if you do really well on a particular type of challenge, next time you come to do Snatch Game, yes. the pressure can make it harder, because you're like, well, you won last time. The pressure is always like amplified for all stars, because like if you did well, you have to meet and exceed your expectations. If you did terrible, you at least have to do better. Yeah. All right, Yara is also feeling mighty confident. Why do you think that is? Because she just won the first challenge. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> out the gate. She's like the front yeah. runner. She has the confidence and so why not flex? That's I found her doing nothing to be more intimidating than if she dragged out one of those dress forms and started just whipping something together. Her, oh, yeah. her chilling is scary. What unconventional material should a queen avoid? Ooh, things that like don't adhere to glue. Cause they're like some like very smooth objects. Yes. Metal is always difficult to work with because you know, it, it, you can't sew through it. So try to stay away from metal yeah. or anything that will cut you for sure. Oh yeah, like non-porous surfaces. I think of like Christmas ornaments. Those are falling right off. Yes, immediately falling off and then breaking and shattering and then you're gonna death drop onto it and be cut up. Yes, for sure. Stay away from those objects. Honestly, some of the stuff they have sitting out on those tables, I'm like, who is gonna use this? <laughs> so before the ball, the queens are starting to get a little anxious about sending their friends home. What did you think about that? Yeah, see, like it's really early in the game, right? And people don't want to show their cards. I mean, coming from my experience, you want to keep your friends around j just for your own sanity. The second you announce that you are friends or a pair with someone, that's when people want to break you up or, or do that kind It of becomes stuff. like a thing. It becomes a thing. I think I was probably, I mean, I never had to send someone home, which is probably what helps me win, but if I had to send someone home, I tried to always pick it based on the performance, just because I was like, 
not that close with anyone there. Like, yeah. I wasn't, I didn't have a best girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's time we get into the blue ball fantasy, okay? Let's do this. Manila, there are 36 looks. Girl, it's a lot. So let's go through, queen by queen. 36 looks and they're all blue. I feel like I'm just like lost on a life raft <laughs> in the middle of the yes! ocean. It's just like so much blue all over the place. If you're red, green, colorblind, this is your episode. This, this is your ball. <laughs> okay, first up we have Raja O'Hara. Mm-hmm. So her first look is a construction look. The first look was my least favorite because it literally looked like she just went to like the store where construction was. Yeah. Workers go. She bought the pants, she bought the vest, she bought the <laughs> She bought the pants. The helmet. You know, it looks like when a drag queen tries to wear a hat. Anytime a drag queen tries to wear a, a hat. Girl, that is such a specific <laughs> thing. No hat ever looks the right size for a drag queen. You basically have to have a maid. The second look was a denim pantsuit. What did you think? I liked it. I like I liked the the glitz. I love Raja in pants. She always looks good in pants. And I think all the little stoning elevated it a lot. Denim looks really good with rhinestones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then finally, she made this little blue look. Bitch. This is the the thing she had the pattern for. Because yes. this looked like she knew what she was doing. She was like, I need this kind of fabric to make this exact outfit. That thing was sickening. Perfection. And anybody who looks that pretty in that short of a wig, go to hell. Ugh. I could All never. All right, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next we have Kylie Sonique Love. Oh. Girl. <sighs> clothes just look good on her. Everything. No clothes look good on her. <laughs> Like, I mean, <laughs> this bitch is just so stunning. She literally could go out there and a diaper. I mean, that second look would look like pedestrian on anyone. But she really is just so beautiful. The two bandanas with the flag. This this whole runway for her all looked like they came from the same collection. Yes. They all looked super good. It was like fully like thematic from the beginning to end. Yeah. It looked fantastic. Up next, it's Eureka. Eureka, Eureka like, came hard for this ball. HBO money. L yeah, it was that HBO cash Girl. money. First of all, I loved her um, crossing guard outfit. Incredible. The squash kid. The squash kid was the <laughs> thing that like took it to the next level. The second look was this really cool mohawk, big E. Did you like that? Yeah, it was giving me like late 90s like hip hop vibes. Her look she made. It's so cute. So cute. Yeah, it's it was proportioned because it's like she made the skirt so short and then you know you had like the little sexy part of like you saw her thong. I mean. But then it was nothing but legs. Yeah. You know, it was like just, it was like Eureka, like a little like cute little like mini tutu and then just all legs. So good. Up next we have Silk, nope, that's a lie. Up next we have Jan. Ooh, girl. Jan. How was she just safe though? The tire look, I thought it was some Manila energy. It was so cute with the little Mickey Mouse tire ear things. Like, so cute. So good. I love, she looked like the Michelin tire man in a good way. Yeah. If that is even possible. And then the second look, the denim stock. How was she safe? I'm sorry. How was Jan safe? It's amazing. And then the look she made, the, the Epi Trinket blue cage. Oh, Blue so, blush. so pretty. The hair was perfect. The look was, was How cute. How did she not win? I don't know. This was cool. I refuse to continue the pit stop until Jan gets a win. And not even like a Jan stan. So up next we have Jiggly Caliente, your sister, icon. I love her like garbage man. You know, it's still in that same realm of what Raj O'Hare was doing, but this one, was, she was giving me fashion. And if you stay petty, you ain't gotta get petty. The trash can, the name. Oh, bitch, I live. I really liked her denim look because I remember wearing those big wide Jinko Jinko jeans. I gagged when Jiggly came out in those pants. Like it just looked, it just brought me back to like my childhood with like the skateboard. The skateboard was very cute and it was not a real skateboard. It was like stylized, which I love. I will let you take the lead on Jiggly's look she made. It was not the baked potato look that she made. It was <laughs> definitely not her San Tropez. She's improved. Look. She's <laughs> improved. <laughs> and I have yes. to say like, it was a completed. <gasps> completed. <gasps> Oh my God, my ears are just Yeah, it, I mean, it was, it was a struggle bus look. It was, I mean, you couldn't more earnestly demonstrate that I do not know the first thing about making anything. Look, 
it didn't look like the baked potato. It was an actual like dress. Didn't she call it like a cocktail dress? I mean, it looked like she had a few It looks like she had a few cocktails. Of cocktails when she was making it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next we have Silky Nutmeg Ganache. This wasn't my favorite set. No, first of all, like, Milkmen like are generally like I, I think of them wearing white. Whites, yes. Yes. So there's that that kind of like maybe it was like strawberry milk she was delivering. I'm not sure. Um, You're giving her the benefit of the doubt, and I love that for you. Her next look, which was her denim look, yeah. was like the thing about the outfit for me was that that stood out as like the ooh look at that was the red shiny fringe, right? And not the denim because the denim outfit I thought was. No, it was, it was, it was a no. not cute, no. Yeah, it was a no. I mean, I can appreciate, no, nothing about it actually. And then finally, what did you think of the look she made? I hated this look. The quilted padded blanket and then she made it into pants, God. which then I just looked hot. She just looked hot up there. <laughs> I just, I, I, I felt like- It's not good to look hot and uncomfortable. Let's look at Scarlet Envy. G -g -g oh, I, I, I thought this was a really, Cute interpretation. She was like, you know your favorite rainforest? Yeah, I chopped that down. <laughs> what did you think of her second look? I liked the little like America stuff, but like, you know, we're still hot off the heels of, you know, the Trump era. So yeah, anytime I see a flag, I just think like Ugh. triggered. Yeah. It was a little it was red, white, and boo. Ooh, I did not live. I'm you sorry. Thought of, you thought of that one. Did, did your joke writers write that for you? <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Go? Is it? Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, she made that beautiful sequin gown. Beautiful. Trumpet skirt, beautiful. Yeah, she did a great job. <laughs> Up next, we have Akira C. Davenport. Mm, 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 mm. Her arm stuck in a pipe? You know, okay, you her know do what you like, know, you know? Do what you know. So this one was, this one was like one of my like misses for sure. It, yeah, I didn't live. I wasn't buying it. I wasn't buying it. No, I wasn't even renting it. <laughs> the the braids, three hair braids. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. see. Love that. Yeah. Yeah, love that. And then what did you think of what she made with all the plastic cups? Her waist is snatched. She has the curves. She's got the hourglass, but she, it was just glass now. It, yeah, like, the hourglass it, is gone. It was just glasses. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a half hourglass. Yeah. It also looked like she couldn't sit down in it. Oh, that woman was not sitting. No, she, she had to stand. But she could pee in the cups. <laughs> Up next, we have Pandora Box. Oh, Pandora coming through with the look. Quite an OG, quite an OG competitor. Yes. I, first of all, I liked her cafeteria lady. Loved. Yeah. It's definitely. A perfect for Pandora. Yeah, she's actually worked in a cafeteria, I'm sure. Still does. Yeah. <laughs> all right, what did you think of the second look? It was very um, Pandora box. For, for some reason, whenever I think of Pandora box, I always think of like a little tiny fascinator hat. I, Manila, if we're being vulnerable on the pod today, I hate little hats. <laughs> what did you think of what she made? The blue ribbon fantasy? It just had, it looked bulky here. Yeah, it looked bulky. I can appreciate the concept of, I'm gonna do myself decorated in blue ribbons and that's the gown is that there's ribbons coming off me. Yeah. I don't think that was achieved, but I like the story. Yeah, I, I mean, I liked it, especially for a girl who's lost the show so many times, but, um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm talking about me, not her. Actually, I'm totally talking about her. <laughs> no. Up next, Yara Sophia. Mmm, Yara Sophia. What did you think of her construction worker outfit? I loved it. I thought it was great. I loved like the tattooed arms, like the muscly like. I arms. love the arms. Yeah, I, I thought it was so clever and cute and so like n opposite of like w what we we're all expecting. So what did you think of her second look? It was like a high neck and then an exposed belly. Okay, course. it was the lowest rise pants I have ever seen on the runway. Literally, it was like, if she moved slightly, we, we would have seen her vagina. Her vagina. Vagina was there. It would have been like, hello. What did you think of the look she made? Now, this is a thing that Yara has a problem with. She sometimes doesn't know how to stop herself from adding more stuff. She doesn't know how to unstart once she- Yes. A whole bunch of stuff on your on the top. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the bottom. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the middle and there's a whole bunch of stuff on your face. You gotta give like the, the eye somewhere to stop. 
All right, up next we have Ginger Minj. She was like when you first play Mario and she and Mario comes out really small. Yeah. And then until you get that one mushroom where she gets bigger. Like, so that was like Ginger Minj. She just looked like little Mario. I love the plumber and no one did a plumber, which I love. What did you think of her second look? It wasn't anything that was like too extra. That's like, how, I can't even remember what it looked like. Yeah, it had it, denim. It was tight jeans, poofy sleeves. It had some sparkles in the back. And what did you think of what she made? It was a, like, it looked like a functioning garment. It looked like a raincoat. Her three looks weren't my favorite, but what you're saying they all did the job. You're saying f her drag. I'm saying f her drag. <laughs> <laughs> but I also might be like biased because I'm more of a Luigi fan than uh, Mario. There you go. Okay. And then finally we have Trinity K. Bonet. I hated this first look. It's so bad. Like she literally like was going for the realness factor of this. Like, she was doing was, community service. It was the khakis and then the really bad cardboard stop sign. Did you like her little 70s look? No, I didn't like it. Uh, the pants were too short. The pants were too short. They were too short. And what did you think of her kind of like Glinda fantasy gown she made? Oh, see, this made up for everything else. Like she literally made the freaking uh, Cinderella remake gown in the workroom in one day with trash. I don't know how it was possible, but it made up for the last two looks. All right, who is your favorite? I don't even remember anymore. There was so much. The answer is Jan. Oh, the answer is Jan. You're it right. Is. See, here's the thing about it. It's like she was known for like never making it to the top. So I feel like just giving it to her in episode two is just too easy. <laughs> you know, it's her brand. Yeah, she's got to work for it. So who was your least favorite? Mm. Ginger Minge wasn't like, like, I don't know. Like there wasn't anything like special. Raja O'Hara is chosen as the winner. Do you agree? No, yeah. I don't. Jan. I don't, Jan. Jan should have won that episode. And that's on period. Orbitz is giving the winner, Raja O'Hara, 5,000 Orbucks, which is like $5,000 to use for booking hotels on Orbitz so they can get away to recharge and get inspired. Mmm, congratulations, girl. Sadly, in the bottom are Yara Sofia and Jiggly Caliente. Yeah, I'm very upset because my Filipina sister is in the bottom. I'm nervous, especially because she came up with a trash can with all these bitches' names on it. Like, I know. Probably like not a good thing. It was girl. not the day. Not the day. Next, we get to see Yara and Jiggly making their case to stay to the other queens, and it's getting emotional. Who do you think is making a better case for why they should stay? I definitely think that Jiggly was definitely making a better case. She was definitely playing the game. She wasn't like letting her pride like prevent her from being like, I'm not going to say that you should keep me. But then she just ends up breaking down and begging people. Listen, if you want it, crying is a small price to pay to stay. We return to the main stage and find out that this week's lip sync assassin is Raja's season 11 sister, <gasps> Brooklyn Heights, the host of Canada's Drag Race. I thought it was pretty cool. Do you think Brooklyn is a good choice for an assassin? Of the actual real assassin, lip sync assassins, I think she's actually a lip sync assassin. So Raja and Brooklyn lip sync to Miss You Much by Janet Jackson. So good. What did you think of the lip sync? Oh my God. I, first of all, I was, I, I was nervous for Raja, and then when she started, I was like, oh, Raja's gonna beat the lip sync assassin. Yeah. Raja, you know when a girl actually likes the song? Yeah. You could tell Raja actually likes this song. I mean, it's Janet Jackson, so who doesn't like Miss You Much? Ah, uh, Miss You Much. So the lip sync is a tie. Do you agree? I mean, I think that Raja should have just had this all over. I think that they just didn't want to give her the money. Or did she win the money? She did. She won and last week's money. She won $20,000. So it's a tie and both Raja and Brooklyn reveal their lipsticks to show that sadly, Jiggly Caliente is the next queen to sashay away. It was almost a double. They could have each picked different names. X-Files theme. Rue mentions to Jiggly at the end of the episode, there's a game within a game. What do you think it is? <sighs> Maybe they're gonna play like Scrabble? Frogger. Frogger, oh my gosh, it's definitely Frogger. I don't know what this thing is. You know, that's what I love about All Stars, there's always a twist. Always there's, a twist. There's always some other game. There's always some twist that you can't even prepare for. Manila, who are your early front runners for the winner of season six? Ooh, okay, let's see. I have no idea at this point. It's too early to tell. I'm standing Sonique, but I'm also, um, I really like Akiria. That's who I am. Mm-hmm. But it's really hard to tell. 
Mina Luzon, I'm so happy you were here today. I love talking to you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, girl. Where can the where can the children find you? Of course, you can find me everywhere. I'm everywhere. You can you can catch me on All Stars 7, 8, 9, and 10. <laughs> we all <laughs> wish. <laughs> And thank you guys for joining me for the Pit Stop. Make sure you catch us next week for episode three of All Star Season 6. Goodbye. Bye. It pays to be fake nice to everyone. You know what? Sometimes it does. I mean, we're both getting paid. We hate each other. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Orbits. <laughs> Thanks, Orbits. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel. And you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of What You Packin'. Hi.